Hi everyone, it's Kunihiro. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make Japanese hamburger steak, known as hamburger in Japanese. It's a western dish we've arranged in a Japanese way. It might look like it's just a hamburger without buns, but it's so much more than that. I guarantee you'll be surprised by its delicious flavors and the tender, juicy result. And it's a very special dish to me because I grew up eating it. Alright, so let me show you how to make it. Alright, so these are the ingredients for today's hamburger steak. So here I have 300 grams of ground beef and pork blend. The ratio is half and half. And I have half an onion, 25 grams of panko bread crumbs, 3 tablespoons of milk, and one large egg. And for seasoning, I have one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. If you can't find this type of pre-blended ground beef and pork mix locally, please buy ground beef and ground pork separately and mix them in a 1 to 1 ratio at home. And these are the ingredients for the sauce. So I have 3 tablespoons of red wine, ketchup, and Worcestershire sauce, and 20 grams of butter. Now, before we start making the hamburger patties, there's an essential tip I'd like to share. That is, it's important to refrigerate all the ingredients until you are ready to use them. Because handling meat at room temperature can cause the fat to melt, resulting in a dry and less juicy hamburger steak. So to avoid that, please refrigerate all the ingredients except the onion, as we'll be chopping it next. Alright, so let's get started. We'll begin by chopping the onion. So first, please make slits against the grain like this. Don't cut all the way through. Make sure to leave one end connected. Then turn the onion 90 degrees so that the side with the slits is on the right. Now cut it thinly perpendicular to the slits this time. And when you get close to the end, lay the onion on its side, turn it, make slits, and cut against the slits again. Then turn the end piece and cut it thinly. And finally, use a rocking motion to chop the diced pieces finely. And here you have it, finely chopped onion. Please transfer it to a bowl. And the chopped onion is done. Next, we'll be cooking the onion, so please get a small frying pan. Add a tablespoon of vegetable oil and the chopped onion to the frying pan and turn on the heat to medium-low. Then sprinkle a pinch of salt over it. This salt is not included in the salt I showed in the beginning. And cook it until the onion becomes slightly brown. And about 3 minutes later, once the onion has become slightly brown like this, turn the heat down to low and we'll patiently saute the onion until golden brown. It will intensify the flavor of the onion. Also, by evaporating the onion's moisture at this stage, we can prevent the onion's moisture from bursting through the hamburger steak while it's being cooked. If that happens, the meat juice will also escape from the same spot and your hamburger steak will end up dry. And about 5 minutes later, when the onion has turned golden brown like this, it's ready. So transfer it to a tray or bowl and cool it down well. Since we are combining this onion with ground meat in the next step, please make sure to cool it down well. 
so it's a good idea to move it into the fridge when it's cooled down a bit. Next, when the onion is completely cooled down in the fridge, let's start making the hamburger mixture. The first thing we do is add one teaspoon of salt to the ground meat and knead it thoroughly. The salt here not only seasons the ground meat, but also has the effect of binding the ground meat together, so that your hamburger steak won't break apart easily and will retain juices inside while it's being cooked. And when it reaches a thickness like this, it's ready. Next, please add 3 tablespoons of milk to 25 grams of panko breadcrumbs and mix them well. The moistened panko will lend a certain fluffiness to your hamburger steak, and the milk will help reduce the unwanted meat smell. And once the panko has been moistened evenly like this, please add it to the ground meat. Next, break an egg into a small bowl and beat it until well combined. Beating the egg in advance ensures it blends evenly with the ground meat and other ingredients. And once you are done beating the egg, go ahead and add it to the bowl. The egg plays a crucial role in making your hamburger steak wonderfully moist. Then please add the onion you cooked earlier. It will add a sweet and savory flavor. And finally, for seasoning, add black pepper for depth and nutmeg for a nutty, slightly sweet aroma. Then mix them well. Once everything is thoroughly combined, your mixture will become sticky like this again. This is a sign it's ready. So, flatten the mixture, divide it in half, and make two equal sized meatballs. Then, get a little bit of cooking oil in a cup, take a little bit on your fingertips and spread it on your palms. Now take one meatball and throw the ball from one hand to the other like this about 20 times. Doing this will remove air bubbles from the mixture, resulting in a smoother, more uniform patty texture. This also reduces the chances of the patty breaking apart during cooking and ensures even cooking. After throwing the meatball 20 times, shape it into a round patty while gently tossing it from one hand to the other. The ideal thickness is about 2 cm. It may seem a bit too thin at this point, but don't worry, it will expand to the perfect size as it cooks. Please place the hamburger patty on a tray and repeat the same process with the remaining meatball. After you've finished making the hamburger patties, please cover them with plastic wrap and refrigerate them for 30 minutes. If you cook them right away, the fat and juices from the meat will drain out before the surface gets seared, resulting in a very dry hamburger steak. Also, in those 30 minutes, all the flavors will blend and your hamburger steak will be even more delicious. Okay, 30 minutes have passed, so let's move on to the cooking process. So please take the hamburger patties out of the fridge and place them in a non-stick frying pan. You don't need to add oil to the pan. Then turn on the heat to medium-low. Now we'll cook the bottom side of the patties for 3 minutes to brown the surface. Please don't touch them at all until the bottom part of the patties is set. After a minute and a half, once the bottom side of the hamburger patties is set, turn them around so they will cook evenly. As you can see, not much fat and juices are coming out of the patties, 
If you had cooked them without the refrigerating, lots of fat and juices would have drained out by now. After 3 minutes, please flip the hamburger patties over. and reduce the heat slightly as the frying pan is now quite hot. Then cook them for 3 more minutes to sear the other side of the patties. Turn them around again at the one and half minute mark. And after 3 minutes, please turn them over again. Now reduce the heat to low and add 3 tablespoons of water to the pan. Put the lid on and steam for 5 minutes. By steaming, the heat will gradually reach its center, making the hamburger steak moist and plump. And after 5 minutes, take off the lid and they are done. The hamburger steaks have expanded and the juices inside are about to burst out, which is exactly what you want. Next, transfer them to serving plates and cover them with aluminum foil to keep them warm. While resting the hamburger steaks, let's make the sauce in the same frying pan. So please add 3 tablespoons of red wine to the pan and turn on the heat to medium-low. Then, use a spatula or turner to scrape off the flavorful bits stuck to the bottom. This step will incorporate them into the sauce, adding extra flavor. And once the red wine starts boiling like this, please add 3 tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, 3 tablespoons of ketchup, and 20 grams of butter. Please mix them well and continue stirring until the sauce thickens. While preparing this sauce, some of you may find it a bit intense. But once you cut into the hamburger steak, plenty of juices will be released, naturally diluting the sauce and making it just right. So please do not dilute the sauce at this point. And once the sauce has thickened to this consistency, it's ready. So remove the aluminum foil and pour the sauce over the hamburger steaks. And to finish, add carrots to the dish with your favorite vegetables. Today I'm adding grilled carrots and steamed broccoli. And here you have it. Your delicious and super juicy hamburger steak is done. Now let me cut it open and show you how juicy it is. Mmm, looks great. It still contains lots of juices inside. It's a success. Can you see how juicy it is? So much juices are sealed inside this hamburger steak. Okay, I'll have a bite. Let me dip it into the sauce. Itadakimasu. Mmm, oishi. It's very juicy and tender. And the flavors are incredible. Sugoi. Mm, Alright, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. So if you did, please hit the like button and leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye bye.